Hi friends, in our last session we have seen design procedure for spindle of lathe machines. In today's session we are going to start with a new topic that is bearings. This is Prasant Kagbi and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin. Now we need to see the first topic that is sliding bearings. And the first question on the spot comes in our mind is that what is bearing? So we would say as the name itself suggests that bearing means it's going to bear something, right? It's going to take the weight of something, which means bearings are going to provide support to the shaft. Basically, we, we would say it's going to provide support to the shaft and the jerk, whereas basically thrust load and radial loads acting on a shaft are transmitted to the machine foundation. Right. Now, we would say there are two types of bearings. One is a sliding contact bearing. Second one is a rolling contact bearing. Whereas in a rolling contact bearing, there are further two types, ball bearing and roller bearings. Okay. So, there are certain drawbacks of ball bearing and roller bearing. That is, large radial dimensions are there. So, this difficulty can be overcome by using a needle roller bearing. However, Wide applications of a needle bearings in machine tool spindles is restricted due to the large coefficient of friction, short service life, and tendency to skew, particularly under an eccentric load. When there is a constraint of space, generally sliding bearings are preferred. Sliding bearings are used under following conditions. So, as you can see, the, there are three conditions in which we can use a sliding bearing. The first is rotational speed are so high that anti-friction bearings becomes uneconomical due to the short service life. Second, accuracy of a spindle rotation is required to be very high. And third, the bearings are subjected to shocks and vibrations. The inherent damping of a sliding bearings is considerably greater than that of an anti-friction bearings due to the presence of Viscous fluid. Now, sliding bearing is a general term that covers all the bearings that do not use the rollers or balls. So, these bearings are operating under the condition of a sliding friction bearing between bearing board and a spindle journal, which are separated by a lubricant film. Now, depending upon the film thickness, the sliding bearings can be classified in a following types. The first is zero film bearings in which there is no lubricant. Second, thin film bearings in which the lubricant layer is not sufficiently thick to completely eliminate metal to metal contact. Friction conditions at the interface of a matting surfaces are of a semi-liquid type and these bearings are known as sleeve bearings. So we are going to see in detail the design of sleeve bearings. Third type is thick film bearing in which the matting surfaces are completely separated by the lubricant film. Okay, the excessive pressure is required to sustain a permanent lubricant film that may be a hydrodynamic or a hydrostatic in nature. Correspondingly, we can say that a thick film bearing may be subclassified as a hydrodynamic journal bearings or a hydrostatic journal bearing. Okay, now let's proceed. So, uh, as you can see in your, on your screen that there is a diagram shown, that is a graph of F versus lambda, where lambda is equal to mu omega by rho. So, this graph is called hersey Strebeck diagram, which depicts the variation of a coefficient of friction F as a function of the quantity lambda. So, lambda is equal to mu omega by P where mu is a viscosity that is absolute viscosity of a lubricant that is how much thick a fluid is. Omega as we know it is it would be an angular velocity of a rotation of a journal and P is an average pressure per unit area of the supporting surface. At a very low rotational speed when lambda is less than lambda 1 you can see on the graph lambda 1 is shown. The lubricant film is extremely thin. 
of the order of 0.1 microns and the coefficient of friction practically does not change with lambda this region which lies to the left of the 0.1 of the hersey strebeck diagram is distinguished by boundary lubrications in which zero film bearings operate now for the higher value of lambda which is lying between lambda 1 and lambda 2 the friction conditions are of semi liquid type and bearing operating under these conditions are known as thin film bearing beyond lambda greater than lambda 2 liquid friction conditions prevail and they represent the operating conditions of a hydrodynamic bearing okay now let's proceed further diameter small d of the journal is always less than the diameter capital D of the bearing. So you can clearly see in the diagram capital D that is outer diameter is a diameter of a bearing and inner small diameter is a diameter of a journal. So at a zero rotational speed the journal is going to rest on the bearing and a metal to metal contact will take place at point A which is shown in this figure A. You can see a metal to metal contact is going to take place. Now as the journal begins to rotate in anti-clockwise direction we would say rotates in a anti-clockwise direction it will tend to roll up the bearing surface due to friction force and moves to the position B so this is the next position which you can see there is a position B after rolling in an anti-clockwise direction the oil film now consists of two parts a converging wedge above line BE and a diverging wedge below it Owing to the hydrodynamic effect, a positive pressure build up in the converging wedge. Now, this hydrodynamic force increases with the increase of a rotational speed and overcome the frictional force. As a result of which, the point of contact which you can see is going to move at point C which is shown in a diagram C. Okay, you can see the diagram C in which a point contact, uh, that is a contact is going to move represented by capital C okay now as long as lambda is less than lambda t the metal to metal contact at point C persists however when the rotational speed is such that lambda is greater than lambda 2 the hydrodynamic force become large enough to lift the journal and continuous film is formed having a minimum thickness at point D which you can see that is after uh, when a speed is going to be increased and so the that uh, the journal is going to be lifted up and a film will be formed which is shown at point d so it is represented by the thickness that is h minimum okay now let us see the design of a sleeve bearing so sleeve bearings are designed for a wear resistance the design conditions are p is equal to capital p upon dl less than or equal to average pressure so p is a bearing pressure capital p is a load on the journal small d is a diameter of the journal l is a length of a bearing where p is a permissible pre value of a bearing pressure and pv is a permissible value of a product of bearing pressure and peripheral speed now the permissible value of p and pv vary in a wide range depending upon the factors such as bearing material sliding velocity cooling and lubrication condition these are given for some important sliding bearing materials which is shown in a next slide you can see the table in a next slide for this so in a table you can see permissible value of p and pv for some bearing materials are shown where p is what basically so p is a bearing pressure and pv was what so pv was a product of bearing pressure and peripheral speed that is both are the permissible value for that a bracket is shown okay now you can see your first column is of a serial number second is a material shown next column is for velocity meter per second next, thereafter the permissible bearing pressure p kg force per centimeter square and the last column is of a product of bearing pressure and peripheral speed so pv that is kg force meter per centimeter square second okay now let us see for the first material break cast iron the velocity uh, would be 0.5 meter per second at that time the permissible bearing pressure would be 40 kg force per centimeter square 
Similarly, there would be a change in our velocity that is 1, then it would become 20 kg force per centimeter square. And when the velocity becomes 2 meter per second, uh, the bearing pressure will become 1 kg force per centimeter square. So, similarly, you can see for all the materials that is anti friction cast iron, modified anti friction cast iron, bronze, aluminium bronze, steel bronze, graphite bronze, white metal, aluminium alloy, and zinc alloy, the values of V and permissible pressure that is bearing pressure is shown in this table so that you can directly use from this table now next is selection of a sliding bearing materials based upon the following considerations so what are the factors while selecting the sliding bearings that we need to see so the first consideration is high wear resistance is required second high fatigue strength is required Third is high compressive strength is required. Fourth one, high thermal conductivity should be there. Fifth is high conformability to accommodate a spindle deformations and reduce the edge pressures. Sixth one is high corrosion resistance. Seventh one is low modulus of elasticity. So we can say that a sliding bearing made from an anti-friction cast iron has a poor conformability, therefore the spindle should have a high stiffness to avoid large pressure. Copper alloy compositions are used in the form of a bimetallic sleeve. A layer of approximately 1 mm thick thickness is deposited on a steel or a cast iron sleeve by a centrifugal casting method. Porous graphite bronze bearing are employed at a low spindle speeds under the conditions of a variable loading. Aluminium alloy is employed as a replacement for a white metal and zinc alloy for bits. Okay guys, so in today's session, we are keeping up till here. Thank you all.